All right, hello again. This is the second of three videos about the Lightroom 4 beta. I am still Skippy with On The Fly Photography, and this right here is the Lightroom 4 beta, available for Windows or Mac. Download link below. Does not work in Windows XP. Is beta software. Might mess up your files. Probably will not. So like I said before, uh, whatever files you're going to import into the Lightroom 4 beta, you should copy them from their original location to a location specifically for the Lightroom 4 beta. And the Lightroom 4 beta will, at some point in the future, stop working, so do not count on it to be around forever. We're going to look at the some develop module stuff real quick. First of all, I'll do this real quick in the library module. When you right click on a picture, you get your develop settings down here. Now it used to be all of your presets were just in here and if you have a lot of presets like I do you had to scroll through and find what you were looking for. They've now got the presets broken down into folders just like they are in the preset panel. So that makes that pretty darn useful. You also see right here they have snapshots and it says none. I know for a fact that this photo does have a snapshot I'm hoping that, I'm assuming that this is something that's maybe not functional in the beta version because again this is a beta version everything in the beta version may not be functional um, I've had this software for less than 24 hours so I have not had a whole lot of time to test everything but so I'm hoping what they're going to do with this is in snapshots you'll see a list of the snapshots you have for that photo and you can click on that snapshot and instantly bring it up that would be very nice so I just wanted to show you that real quick because I like that. Now let's hop to the develop module and look at some things that are different. First of all, now if you're importing new photos that have never been in Lightroom before, you're not going to get this. This, These photos right here, all of these pictures, have been edited in Lightroom 3. So that's where all of this was done. Although that looks very strange. Anyhow, the point is, you will see that this little exclamation mark down here, this is telling me that this photo has the 2010 process. The 2010 process was the process for Lightroom 3. The 2003 was, I believe, I'm not sure if that was Lightroom 1 or Lightroom 2. Probably Lightroom 2. There's a new process, 2012. So any photo you import that has a 2010 process you're going to see this little icon. If you click on it it's going to give you the option to update this photo to 2012 process. You can review the changes before and after. You can not show this message again or you can update, not up straight, update all of your film strip photos. I would advise against doing this blindly because when you update the process it's going to change the way the picture looks and again like I said this is only a concern if you've already edited the photo in Lightroom 3 so when I hit update you're going to see the photo is going to change there we go we've got this one next door same thing here this one's still 2010 I'm going to hit this we're going to update it you're going to see it changes. And remember, you don't necessarily have to hit that. If I'm over here, it's a 2010. You, know, you can change it simply by doing that. So there's a new process, and photos that you have modified in previous Lightroom will be changed by that. Now, which process you're in, 2012 or 2010, will also have some effects on what options are available to you. Again, uh, brand new photos you're importing into Lightroom 4 are automatically going to default to the 2012 process. And again, you can always go back. If you want to go back to the 2010 process, you can do that. So now this photo is in 2012 process, and I'm going to reset the photo so that all of my editing is gone. The effects uh, panel, pretty much the same stuff. And I'm talking here mostly about user interface. I'm sure there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that I don't necessarily know about, can't speak to. This is all mostly interface stuff. Lens correction, there's still the automatic profile corrections, but what they've added is you can automatically remove chromatic aberrations. You just click on that. It does it for you. Detail 
pretty much the same as far as interface. Split toning, same as far as interface. HSL color and black and white, these are all the same as far as the interface goes. The first new thing is in the tone curve, first of all, let me get back to the quote unquote normal tone curve. So this part of the tone curve is just like it was before. However, if you go into the edit tone curve here, what you'll see that's new is this right here. You can choose to modify, where's my mouse, there it is, all of the channels, the RGB, or you can choose to modify only the red or only the green or only the blue. And you can save these if you create your own custom profiles. And of course you can reset it because that's just me bumping stuff around to show you what it looks like. So that is a new thing. And again, if you're in, if you're trying this out and you don't see it, it's because you're still in 2010. See, if I'm in 2010, that doesn't exist anymore. It's not there because we're back in 2010. We know that because we see the little icon and also because I went down here and physically changed it. Now the next thing is the basic panel. When you're in the 2010 profile, this all looks just the same as it did in Lightroom 3. Watch up here. When we upgrade, update, that was my computer making weird noises. That was not part of Lightroom 4 Beta. You have to pay extra for the weird noises. When we update, we will see that things here have changed. You have your exposure. We'll, for, we'll start up here. You have, of course, your white balance, uh, just like before. It does what it normally does. You have your tint. It does what it normally does. You have your exposure, does what it normally does. You have your contrast, does contrasty stuff. We're going to skip those for now. You got your presence down here. You got your clarity and your lack of clarity. You got your vibrance and your lack of vibrance. You got your saturation and you got your lack of saturation. Those are all pretty much the same as they were in the previous Lightroom. Now I'm going to bump back to 2004 for a minute just to show you and I'm going to turn off the solo mode so I don't have to do that. So a good example of the changes is with the black slider. Originally this is Lightroom 3 interface blacks started over at the left and when you were at zero it was you know the way it came out of your camera and as you increase the black slider the blacks get blacker. Okay when you're in the 2012 also, let me back up real quick. Notice you have recovery, fill light, blacks, and brightness. Now, when we go to 2012, you now have highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Notice each of them starts in the middle, and the middle is zero. So your blacks, this is zero. If you turn the blacks up to 100, the blacks get whiter, not blacker. To make the blacks blacker, you have to go this away, and now at negative 100, your blacks are blacker. Here's your whites. As you move the whites up, whites get whiter. Down, whites get less whiter. I'm going to make up some new words here. Shadows. You can whiten your shadows, lighten your shadows, brighten your shadows, or you can more shadowy shadow your shadows, darken your shadows. And highlights. Highlights, you can make your highlights more highlighty, or you can make your highlights less highlighty. Now, do any of these like directly translate, like is, is highlights what used to be recovery? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. I don't want to go out on a limb and make statements like that yet about something I don't know that much about yet. Other changes are in some of the tools up here. Let me bump back to 2010. 
So the crop tool pretty much the same and the spot tool same, red eye tool same. Differences arise in the gradient tool which we're looking at here. Let me close my basic panel and in the adjustment brush. So you got your controls down here which are going to be the same. Again we're in 2010 mode so this is what it looks like in Lightroom 3. When we go to the 2012 process you're going to see this changes. Now this down here is the same stuff. The controls for the brush itself stay exactly the same. The gradient of course doesn't have those controls and I'm going to illustrate the differences using the gradient just because that's a better tool for doing it. So the first thing you see is that now with both the brush and the gradient you can now control locally your white balance. And you can control locally the tint. You still have exposure, you have contrast, now you have the highlights, And I'm getting emails from my friend Robin and you control the shadows and you can control the clarities and you can control the saturations saturations if I can talk control your sharpness and it has noise and more a don't ask me what those do yet because I don't know because I have not had time to research that said I've had the software less than 24 hours and I have had to eat sleep and you know do important things like watching Spartacus blood and sand for the second time so there you go those are new things in the develop module that come along with the 2012 processing other than that a lot of the develop module appears to be much the same there's probably some new presets in there all that other stuff history blah 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 so there it is Download it, play with it, enjoy it. Third video is coming, and that will be about how Lightroom 4 handles video files. All right, thanks much. Bye-bye.